You see very commonly in discussions about how to spot a fake natural bodybuilder, the idea that big traps and 3D delts are something that's very difficult to develop naturally, so that's a good sign of somebody that's on steroids. While there's some truth to that, and I'll go into that later, I do disagree with the idea that naturals can't build traps. I'm living proof of that, and also delts. So in this video, first I'm gonna go into my theory on why you don't see naturals with big traps and delts. And then I'm gonna go into how to build big traps naturally, which is actually quite easy. So I'll cover that first. Then I'm gonna go into the idea of delts, which is a little bit more difficult. And finally, I'll go into the actual truth behind the idea that these uh, enhanced athletes are gonna have more 3D delts than anyone else. Part in the background, baby guys, we uh, had to get to a little bit of a shadier area. She was complaining about the sun. Okay, so the commonly accepted theory on why it is that, that uh, steroid using athletes are supposed to be able to build big traps and delts and naturals can't is that supposedly there's more androgen receptors in the traps and delts, so they respond more to steroid usage. Okay, that may be true, but the issue is not that steroid users can build big traps and delts because they can build big everything. The issue seems to be that natural athletes can't. So, I mean, I, I don't think that the androgen receptors really explain a whole lot, given that there's really no area that steroid users can't build. Okay, so the issue is why, why aren't natural athletes able to do that? And my answer to that question is natural athletes, unlike steroid users, really need heavy compound exercises specifically targeted to the muscle they're trying to build. It's not going to work to just use light isolation exercises like the steroid users can get away with. And if you look at the exercises that natural athletes are doing, they're not really doing anything that specifically targets these muscles with big heavy exercises. To show what I mean, let's just first get into the traps. This is pretty easy, so I'm not going to spend too long on it. To build big traps, naturally, you're going to need to use some sort of big heavy trap exercise. My favorites are power shrugs. Now, a lot of people like the heavy rack pulls. Uh, I know Alpha Destiny supports this and his videos make a whole lot of sense and he's got big traps. Um, there's also some old school support for this as they would use stuff like the hand and thigh lift, a bunch of like pretty much things that are very similar to a rack pull and they didn't seem to have any issue with traps either. I personally greatly prefer power shrugs because I find that they work better and also you can get away with using less weight. Still a massive weight. I mean, I regularly do six, seven, eight plates on the power shrugs each side, which is quite a lot, but not a lot compared to what you'd have to do for an equivalent rack pull. I mean, you know, I'd much rather load up seven plates a side than 11 plates a side. I mean, I mean, you can get to some crazy weights on rack pulls. It's really inconvenient. I mean, you get into potentially bar damaging territory there. But really, I just prefer power shrugs because they work. My traps just absolutely blow up after I start incorporating some heavy power shrugs back into my routine. They, they do shrink when I stop doing them. They blow up when I start doing them. It works, plain and simple. Okay, that was, that was honestly pretty easy. Uh, only thing left to explain is why natural athletes aren't getting the traps big. And honestly, I think it's because natural athletes tend to be pretty conservative, pretty risk averse. I mean, the guys that aren't gonna take steroids are also going to be the guys that always want to use proper form, never heave, never do anything that, you know, would be dangerous. And obviously doing, you know, a dynamic movement with seven plates on the side, you know, may trigger their risk aversion. So I think a lot of natural athletes are going to be disinclined to do power shrugs or to do them with the weight that would be required. But you can try power shrugs for yourself. And if you go pretty heavy on them and your traps don't blow up, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just an anomaly or something but I honestly think that settles the traps issue. On to the delts, which are a little bit more difficult. Now the issue with naturals building delts seems to be, they tend to build front delts pretty well, but their side and rear delts tend to lack a lot. They don't have the same 3D look as a lot of juicers. And people would say that's got something to do with androgens. I think it has a lot more to do with the exercise selection. I think the problem has a lot more to do with the exercise selection that natural trainees find themselves with today. What natural trainees are mostly doing is a lot of exercises that are really good for 
front delts with big heavy weights, bench press, a lot of overhead pressing variations, a lot of lifts that really engage the front delts and don't do a whole lot for the side delts. Most of what people today use for side delts are going to be isolation exercises, either some light dumbbell work or machine work. I mean, there's really not a whole lot of big compound exercises that are used that actually even target the side delts. And to fix this, you have to really question your preconceptions about what actually is a shoulder exercise and think outside the box a little bit. I think a lot of the best uh, side delt developers and rear delt developers for natural athletes are exercises that are not done today and exercises that a lot of people might not necessarily even think of you know, as a shoulder exercise on face. My favorite side delt exercise is actually the Turkish get-up. That's definitely not going to come to mind when people list their you know, side delt exercises, but just supporting that weight through varying angles on an extended arm, you know, having to fight to keep position, try it yourself, it always smokes my side delts, and I've actually noticed significant improvement in my side delt size when I started doing them heavy. Another exercise that a lot of people aren't going to initially think of as a shoulder exercise that I really like for side delts is overhead squats. Now you can do these both one-handed and two-handed. The two-handed version definitely works, and I mean, you'll see Olympic lifters always have great shoulder development. But back in the day, they used to do one-handed overhead squats, and this was actually seen as kind of a foundational exercise. Like, once you get a little bit of a foundation going as a beginner, you ought to start doing this to develop your overhead lifting capability. And if you read old books, the, uh, the old timers actually thought of building shoulder sizes almost trivial. They thought of it as not something that anyone would have any difficulty with. And that's because they did so many exercises that involve supporting heavy weights overhead in varying positions. And that really brings the side delts into play with a serious heavy weight in a way that modern exercises don't. Some other unconventional exercises that you might not think of you know, would be hang cleans. They can also work the side delts really well. Another favorite of mine, again, hitting the theme of supporting a weight in various positions at arm's length overhead is gonna be overhead walks. Pick up a heavy weight, you know, maybe somewhat close to your jerk max, put it overhead and take a walk with it. This gives you a whole bunch of micro contractions for your shoulders, requires your shoulders to, you know, really tense up and support the weight and really engages the side delts in a way that the regular pressing exercises that everyone's using today don't. So I think when you start incorporating those bit press, uh, windmills, a lot of exercises that require you to be lifting a weight overhead or supporting a weight overhead while moving into unusual positions, I think that's going to do a whole lot for your rotator cuff, your side delts, your rear delts. And while I'm only getting started with all these exercises, I'm already noticing that suddenly I have shoulder balance. My shoulders look pretty balanced already. I no longer have the natural look where I'm all front delts and no side or rear delts, which I think is a look that's characterized or that's uh, resulting from a whole bunch of bent press and then trying to balance that out with, you know, face pulls and lateral uh, extension, or sorry, lateral raises. Um, now, there is some truth to the idea that natural athletes don't build 3D delts in a certain way, and I'll go into that now. If you look at me, you'll see I think I have pretty balanced shoulders, but you're not going to think that I look unnatural. I don't have the look of bowling balls coming out of nowhere that characterizes some steroid users, and what I think that is, it's not that... Uh, the steroids are developing delts specifically. It's that steroids allow you to pick and choose what you want to grow. You can take steroids and do isolation exercises and grow exactly what you want to grow, not grow the rest of it. So you'll see a lot of these guys, especially like the gym shark type guys, are mostly who I'm talking about here. They're going to have very small torsos, very small waist, obliques and everything. You know, a slim torso, big V taper. But it almost looks like they have huge shoulders and arms just like grafted onto a smaller person's body. And you'll never see that in a natural athlete because, as you just saw, every shoulder exercise that I talked about is going to be one that's going to also develop the midsection. So you're going to have a very different look in a natural athlete, even if he has big shoulders 
and uh, a big overall development, it's not going to have that illusion of size that you know a gym shark guy is going to have because actually much of his body is very small. Like we're, if a natural athlete gets big in one place, he's going to be big everywhere. That's just how it works. We have to train our body as a unit, so we're going to grow as a unit, whereas they can isolate out what they don't want, have a tiny waist, and big shoulders. Man, this has been a struggle. I really doubt I'm actually going to use this, given all the interruptions, uh, commentary by the little baby, but... If I do end up posting this, hope you enjoyed. Hope you try out some of these exercises for yourself. And I hope you disprove for yourself the myth that natural athletes can't build traps and delts. Thanks for watching.